So my name is, uh, is Jacob Sterling. I, I work in Maersk, where I'm responsible for decarbonizing our shipping operation and also the innovation in decarbonization overall. Um, we have set ourselves a target uh, in Maersk to decarbonize our entire business by, by 2040. Uh, and uh, and that, is, that is obviously a very stretched target. Our scope one emissions alone are around 34 million tons of CO2 per year. And, uh, and, and most of that comes from, from our ocean business or our shipping business, as we call it. Um, and that's, that's what I'm responsible for, uh, together with the team and together with the whole organization, to try and, and, and figure out how do we actually do that. Uh, because it hasn't been done before, not in our business, of course, uh, but also not in any other business. Uh, so we will, um, we will first and foremost need to basically find new energy sources for our ships. We have around 750 ships and they consume a lot of energy to, to move goods around the world. It's the most energy efficient way to move goods, but they still use a lot of energy and a lot of oil as it is today. So we are, we are trying to find alternative fuels that can be scaled uh, to, to the millions of tons uh, so that it can help us decarbonize. First of all, we need to figure out uh, what types of fuel we would be going for. Uh, will it be, will it be fuel, fuels that can be used in existing engines or do we also need new ships or, or at least uh, rebuild ships to, to, uh, to, to make it work with these fuels? Uh, but also, fundamentally, we, when we abandon fossil sources of fuel, then we can either get our energy from renewable electricity uh, that is turned into fuels uh, or from biomass that is turned into fuels. And especially for the biomass, uh, we need to have a very significant focus on the sustainability of the biomass that goes into uh, the fuels that we're going to use. Because uh, you know, biomass as such are, you could say, almost automatically uh, carbon neutral when we use it in the ships. But if we have created a lot of problems uh, elsewhere in the world, then we haven't really solved any issues. Uh, we don't want to risk that, for example, uh, the biofuels that we use or the bio-based uh, methanol or whatever it might be, uh, is based on feedstocks that are unsustainably produced, uh, might be causing a, a unsustainable forest practices or, or, or whatnot. Yeah, I mean, before we, we started looking into this, you know, I didn't know much about what biofeedstocks could actually be, but now we have really looked into it, and it's amazing how diverse the sources of, uh, of, of bio is. I mean, bio is not only, uh, you know, wheat or rapeseed oil, uh, it can also, that are sort of n well known crops, it can also be as you say beef tallow, I mean I never thought about that as something that could be a potential fuel, but there are a lot of different uh, biofeedstocks out there and they can play a really important role, but we just need to make sure that, that they actually represent a step towards something uh, much more sustainable. There's a lot of capabilities in the field of decarbonization and sustainability that we cannot have in MERS, we're building up a, a strong team uh, now, but we're also working very closely with, uh, with other organizations such as Preferred by Nature, where, where, where we, we work with, with, uh, with the organization to, to help us create a methodology to actually assess the sustainability of, of specific um, uh, biomasses or biomass sources, uh, uh, feedstocks that can be used for fuel production. Uh, a, very, a very interesting project that, uh, that uh, among all, I think, revealed to us that this is very complex and it's very hard to get to, you could say. I mean, if we ask a, a, a simple question like, for example, now you mentioned beef tallow, is beef tallow sustainable? Then you will never get a yes or no. You will get a, where does it come from and how was it produced? And we need to go into the very specific details to actually understand. And I think that was a big revelation for us and something that will, uh, that will be used going forward. Yes, yes, exactly, and uh, and I think that actually uh, that actually made it a lot easier because we were not starting from scratch. Uh, uh, Preferred by Nature came with a sustainability framework, which uh, appeared to us as a very solid foundation to work on. Uh, I remain optimistic optimistic about reaching the goals. Uh, it is very, very challenging. Uh, we are we are right now um, in the process of actually building ships to run on green fuels. 
um, but the factories to produce the green fuels are not built yet. So there is this sort of uh, arms race almost. I mean, we're building ships that can burn uh, green fuels. At the same time, we need to make sure that capacity to, to produce green fuels is also being built. Uh, and the third uh, uh, dimension, I would say, is that we need to continue to see that uh, customer demand for actually paying for all this is picking up. Uh, it looks really promising, but there are so many uh, things that, uh, that we need to move forward in parallel at the same time. Uh, I think, you know, I, I remain as optimistic as I was uh, uh, probably one or two years ago when I set the target and, and knew, a lot le knew a lot less. Uh, now we have learned a lot, uh, and I think, and we, so we know more about the challenges we have, but we also know a bit more about some of the solutions that we have. So I'm, I think I'm optimistic in the same way as I was, but it's a, it's a massive work ahead, and it's going to be bumpy, that's for sure. Well, I think uh, in shipping and outside shipping, actually across most sectors, uh, companies are looking to switch away from uh, fossil sources of energy to uh, renewable sources of energy, either renewable electricity or biomass-based uh, uh, energy of some sort, either fuels or whatever. You also have materials that are being produced today from fossil energy, like, like plastics, that uh, will probably need to be produced from something else in the future. So there's going to be a massive demand for uh, biomaterials in the future. And I think organizations like Preferred by Nature that can certify that the origin of those biomaterials is sustainable is, uh, is going, to, uh, going to be in a good place and is going to be uh, needed uh, a lot uh, in that uh, transition. Also because there is, there is a risk that some companies will um, have a narrow focus on CO2 and then take shortcuts. Uh, quite frankly, uh, where it could have some, some side effects in, uh, uh, in, 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 in forests or in the agricultural lands that are, that are not good. Uh, and I think certification and a continuous push, push for, for raising the standards both in regulation and in voluntary certification is, is going to be super crucial and is going to be uh, very much in demand.